conceptual people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements Wallace here dropping in on you. I hope that everything is going well with you. I just wanted to take time to talk with you about something that's kind of trending right now. Uh, normally, I don't get involved with uh, discussions about the lives of celebrities because their lives are not usually uh, intertwined or in sync or in alignment with the lives that the average person lives. These are even people who uh, have achieved a certain level of financial excess and uh, economic fluidity <coughs> don't live on the same plane as the average celebrity. So I tend not to get into it. I'm not somebody that's fixated on it. I've spent a lot of time around it in a past life. Um, and it doesn't represent where I'm headed, except for when there's a teaching moment or there's something I think that is immersed within the topic of discussion that requires some clarity. Um, before I get into this, let me remind you that we definitely need your support. So support the work we're doing at The Honesty Project. Okay, that's over. Look, um, everybody's weighing in on this uh, situation where Lisa Ray uh, basically uh, sent smoke the way of uh, Halle Berry attacked her, personally addressed uh, her prowess in the bedroom or the lack thereof. Uh, I'm not going into details because I think it was highly disrespectful. And the reason that I'm going to address this is because I think that it is a microcosm of a much greater issue within the black community. We have no problem dealing with or confronting, I ain't gonna say confronting, we have no problem with highlighting uh, the, the gap that is currently existing between black men and black women. We have no problem uh, with black women blaming black men for the vast majority of their enigmatic issues and dilemmas. Uh, what we don't deal with enough is the proclivity of black women to attack other black women, the, the competition, uh, the vitriol, and where it comes from, and uh, the devastating impact that it has on the lives of the black community as a whole. And to me personally, and I've tried very hard uh, not to personally attack anybody that I don't consider to be an absolute enemy of the black community. If I consider you to be an enemy, you're free, you're free game. If I consider you to be a little bit misdirected off or just a part of a struggle mentally and emotionally that we're all dealing with on some level, I try my best not to be assaultive in my address, but I think that number one is I do have the right to address behavior. And the behavior of Lisa uh, Ray has been questionable um, for some time now. There has always been a, a suspect element in how she carries herself. I think that it's it's weird uh, that she would use this platform. And now again, I don't understand or I'm not aware of the context of the conversation on her show that led to her specifically addressing Halle Berry and why she felt the need to talk about what Halle Berry can or cannot do or is incapable of doing in her bedroom with her men. Uh, in case you're not aware of what I'm talking about, the ultimate uh, premise of Lisa Ray's uh, assertion is that the reason Halle Berry can't keep a man is because she can't put it down in the bedroom for whatever reason. I'm not going to say what she actually said, but it was foul. And so... Uh, what I didn't like about the whole situation is that Halle Berry, who uh, I think has established herself, I have my issues with Halle for a number of reasons. I sort of fell completely out of uh, fixation or whatever you want to call it that almost every black man had for her back in the day when she did Monsters Ball. It's never been the same for me since. Uh, obviously, her choice in men has had its impact on me 
um, you know, a person can't uh, control the fact of whether or not they are biracial. That that was that happened before they got here, <laughs> but. Uh, they have to make a choice of how they're going to live their lives, what they're going to identify as, what they're going to move as. And for the most part, she's always identified with her blackness. But uh, I think our choice in men speaks to some other issues, and I'm not going to get into that. But, you know, I'm not this huge fan that's coming at Lisa Ray because of Halle Berry. I'm coming at Lisa Ray because of a black woman. Um, you know, and, and, and my thing is we need to understand, I believe that the vitriol and the competitiveness and the constant uh, infighting of black women is more devastating than the issues they have with black men. Uh, I think that, you know, there are some things with black men we definitely have to deal with as far as intimate, intimate partner homicide, intimate partner violence, uh, but on the grand scheme of things, this infighting, this need to uh, attack one another instead of embracing the sisterhood and the differences within the sisterhood and that was something that even if you felt that hey let me call up uh Halle man let's see if you know I can spit game to her give her a little advice uh the other thing that I saw about it that I thought was sort of funny is that a woman who's had issues keeping men is talking about another woman who can't keep a man uh, it's not like she's been in a 20 year relationship with somebody that has been constant conflict and maybe her issues aren't because of what's going on in the bedroom. Maybe she's got that killer, uh, killer good, you know, that killer cookie, whatever it is that, you know, everybody's saying, you know, whatever about her. And she feels strongly about her bedroom game. Uh, but let me, let me, let me put it down for all sisters, no matter how good the cookie is, you can't use it to keep a man. Uh, no matter how good the cooking is, can't use it to keep a man. No matter how docile and faithful and whatever other thing and law you can be, you can't use that to keep a man. The only thing that keeps a man is a man that wants to be kept. And you have to understand that. That has to be understood at the beginning. You need to understand the character of the man you're dealing with. You need to understand the expectations of the man you're dealing with. You need to make sure that the man you're dealing with knows your expectations. That needs to be a clear understanding of what uh, the meaning of loyalty is, what the meaning of cheating is, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, what are the boundaries of the relationship, what are the expectations. So many things fall apart because of unrealistic expectations or unspoken expectations. Expectations. That's the important thing. The idea that you can go in a bedroom and put it down on a brother and that's going to keep him is absolutely absurd. I know guys who I talk to that I've counseled who have who, who, who say their wives are very boring in the bedroom, but they are very loyal because they're focusing on so much more than that. Can having a good sex life really help? Yeah, because there's so much that goes on spiritually when you sit up and you interchange uh, on that level, when you merge on that level, there's so much that happens and goes on that it can help and it can hurt, but it is not a sole indicator of whether your relationship is going to last or not. And But my focus on this isn't even the lack of validity in the assessment or assertion or idea or concept about sex and relationships. It's the whole idea that she felt it was okay to attack another black woman in open. Now, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if there's some other elements involved. All I know is that it's come out and I've been looking for where Hallie took a shot at her. And, you know, if we're going to be honest, career-wise, Hallie's on a whole nother level than Lisa Ray. So I can't see Lisa Ray being in Hallie's uh, crosshairs for anything. Uh, but it could be, it could be something personal that I don't know about and that may go on and then that may change the whole story. It still will boil down to my ultimate complaint is that we've got to find a way to get along. Black men need to do a better job of getting along. We've been pitted against one another. We feel competitive. We feel that it's only enough for us. And if we, if, if there's another brother with any type of like skills or life giftedness, he's an enemy. He's there to take from us. We don't support one another. We don't lift each other up. That's why it's so hard for our programs to work. That's why it's so hard for us to really pull together and do things that we need to do. It's because we spend a great deal of our time arguing with one another, attacking one another, looking for ways to tear each other down. One of the things that I have 
prided myself in is being very careful about how I address other black men who are doing work in the community from Dr. Boyce Watkins to Dr. Umar Johnson to Tariq Nasheed. Um, and, and my elders are off limits anyway. Dr. Claude Anderson, uh, when she was alive, uh, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, Dr. Naeem Arbor, Dr. George DeGruy, all those people are completely off limits. Those are the people who have fed my heart, my spirit, my soul, and my mind and challenged me to do greater and be greater. So they're off limits. Well, and it's not that they have to be right. It's just simply that there's a level of respect that I have for my elders. Doesn't mean that I can't say what something was said was wrong, but there's a respectful way to say it. There's a way that you can do it without personally attacking a person. And I choose to do that. That doesn't mean that if I find that in my mind I can uh, justify that you are actually out to hurt my people that I won't dig into your ass. It just means that I look at all these brothers and specifically brothers that are doing their thing and each one of them has their own philosophy. Each one has their own approach. Even Each one has their own gift and, and, and skill. And so what they're doing is doing their thing. And I'm going to support it to the fullest. I don't expect anyone to agree with everything that I agree with. And I don't expect to agree with everything someone else does. I just need to see that you're truly trying to do something for my people. And I'm going to show you love. I'm going to give you the respect you deserve in that area without demanding that you be exactly where I think you should be and, and all that because I know that I'm not perfect. But back to our women, we've got to do a better job. I'm just simply saying that has to be uh, our idea and our goal and our focus is that we're going to come together. There's so much power in our black women that our black women aren't experiencing because they're too busy flexing what they believe to be their strength. I would much rather discuss the power of a black woman than to talk about her strength. Her strength is a reflection of the failure of our black men, the failure of our black uh, outlook and paradigms and our culture. Uh, when the woman is truly operating, she's operating from a sphere of power. There's no exertion of in, uh, physical energy necessary for power. No emotional energy. You simply execute it. And it's natural. It's instinctive. And we're failing to operate in it because we're spending way too much time operating on low frequencies in, in attack mode for things that don't require our energy. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. There's some things that I have to do, but I definitely wanted to talk about that on a different level. For that, I'm out. You guys have an unbelievable day. Peace. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. First of all, I want to thank everyone for all the love and support that you have given uh, and sent my way and my wife's way and the organization's way. Now, I want to just take a brief moment to remind you that we still need your support. We still need your help. Go to the description box of one of our videos and see how you can support the work we're doing. Keep supporting, keep loving us, and we're going to keep loving you back. Have an awesome day.
From a conceptual perspective, people talk about it as all of the elements.